All right, what is going on guys? It's Big Girl Rodin here, and today we're gonna to be doing a review of Post Malone's new album, Hollywood's Bleeding, released this Friday. So I guess if you're watching this in the future, it was released on September 6th, but for me, that was just three days ago. I think, I think I've had enough time to absorb and formulate my opinions on this album. So this is Posty's follow-up to last year's Beer Bongs and Bentleys, which if you haven't watched my top 10 albums of 2018, go watch that. It's a great video, my first music video and you would know that this was my fifth album on that list so i really enjoyed beer bongs and bentley's also enjoyed his fuck out of here what is this shit i really enjoyed his debut album stony and now let's see if hollywood's bleeding can live up to the hype of those two albums all right starting off with the first song we had the title track hollywood's bleeding which is one of my favorite songs on the whole album it's very cinematic it has like the sense like this could be a movie intro or theme song or something you know what, I think Posty should have the job for the next James Bond theme song. I mean, anything he does can't be worse than Sam Smith's garbage for the last movie, but it's very cinematic, very personal and deep. He talks about the usual Posty stuff like fame and women and whatnot and alcohol and his pain, but there's a beat switch in the middle. The production is very orchestral and really haunting and I think this is one of the highlights throughout this whole album is that Posty's production on this project sounds way way more creative and influenced than some of his previous projects so Hollywood's Bleeding the first track great opening track <clears throat> so moving on we have Saint Tropez which is a pretty by the numbers Posty song I could see this one being a grower for me I didn't really like it at first but it's got some good quotable lines like Versace boxers on my dick like thanks Posty I wanted that image in my mind it's got a nice beat it flows well over it it's pretty generic in the sense that this is a Post Malone song we've heard numerous times before and I'll we'll probably hear it numerous times throughout this album but still a good song because Posty, at the end of the day, he's a great artist, and he really only releases, like, at least above average music. There's no songs on this album or on any of his other records that are, like, unlistenable to. So Posty's got that going for him. St. Tropez. In the future, I could see this being maybe one of the radio hits from this record, and I could see it growing on me. Right, moving on, we have Enemies featuring DaBaby. If you haven't listened to much DaBaby this year, you should, because he's popping off really hard. He's gotten single after single after single blowing up. Shrug babysitter I'm the type of baby that's gonna fuck the babysitter you know the baby the baby's killing it this year and this song kind of surprised me it's got a funkier beat than I was expecting the baby rides over it well I enjoy the hook Posty's hook game throughout this whole record is killer at this point in his career after releasing three albums I think he's really got the formula down on how to make a hook that's catchy and can have radio appeal but also sounding like it was creative and didn't like just come up off the top of his head on like some freestyle in the booth so he has that the baby's feature is good the beats like i said funkier and a little more upbeat than i was expecting of a baby feature but it's a good song nonetheless all right moving on we have allergic which is kind of sounds like posey's attempt at a 21 pilots s song it's kind of sounds like that modern poppy alternative type rock beat in the background it's all right. I didn't really feel it. It sounds like something that other people have done better. And I guess Posty is just experimenting. I appreciate that because, like I said, a lot of his songs like St. Tropez kind of start to sound repetitive at some point. Allergic something different. It wasn't for me, but I could understand why people like it. Moving on to the next song. Like, <laughs> talking about repetitive Post songs, A Thousand Bad Times also kind of sounds like that generic Posty song, but I personally really like this hook. When I'm trying to form my opinions on a repetitive post song, I usually lean towards the hook and like the passion of his delivery. And I think like this hook on A Thousand Bad Times, it's catchy. It got stuck in my head the first time I listened to it. His delivery, it's got a lot of passion to it. More passion in my mind than St. Tropez. So that was kind of the, the factors that went into my mind when I was picking a, a song that's like A Thousand Bad Times, St. Tropez. All his solo songs are kind of lean into that similar posty style. And some of them I felt were better and some I felt were worse. A Thousand Bad Times is one of the ones I thought was better in this album. Not one of my favorite songs in the album, but still a good song nonetheless. Moving on, we have Circles. And side note, let's do, a, let's do a nonetheless counter throughout this review. Every time I say nonetheless, take a drink. I feel like I've been saying that a lot. But Circles was one of the singles for the album. Actually, the last single released. First time I heard it, I didn't really like it. I thought, like, what is this weird... 
I don't know, like, rock, pop angle he was going for in this song. But the more I listened to it, the more I enjoyed it. And now I can see why it's already got 50 million plays on Spotify. Because I think it's a good song. I think it's catchy. I like the, like the theme of running in circles. I mean, that's obviously not something super deep and, like, do a literary analysis of the lyrics. But it's a good song. I think it's unique. It's different than the other solo songs he has in this album. It's a new direction for him. And I think it's... Not the best single he released for the album, but a good a good introduction for people to get hype right before it released. Alright, moving on we have Die For Me, which has one of the best hooks in the record. It's very catchy, and I like the gimmick where each time the feature switches on the track, the feature artist does the hook. So Feature does it, I believe Halsey does it. Both of them have good verses. Halsey's obviously a pop singer, but she drops like a type of hip-hop, poppy slash mixture of a verse feature does a weird falsetto like when he did uh lobby dobby dash lob on me knob in king's dead on that kendrick song from the black panther album overall it's one of my favorite songs on the album and i think all three artists meshed well and created a track that i could see this being one of the biggest hits from the record <clears throat> moving on we have on the road which features meek millie and little baby my second favorite baby artist or maybe my first honestly i really like both babies <laughs> We need a third baby artist to just keep the baby names going. Maybe like Big Baby? But, um, so this song, On the Road, Meek Mill and Lil Baby's verses, they sound kind of phoned in. Not phoned in enough to where it ruins the song, but it doesn't seem like their best verses of all time. However, the beat on the song is really good. Some of the best production on the albums on On the Road. And Posty drops a good verse, good hook. Like I said, the features don't really raise this song's level but they don't take away from it so overall it's a it's a mid song nothing bad nothing wrong with it it's a good song nonetheless mm, nonetheless all right now we have take what you want which was my biggest surprise in the album because i saw ozzy osbourne as a feature i'm like he's a good artist back in the 80s back of black sabbath but can he really still do the same shit he did back then now well, it turns out he can, because he, he raised this song to another level. It sounds like he could have recorded Paranoid, like, last week. His voice sounds good as ever, which is always weird, because you hear Ozzy Osbourne talk, and you literally need subtitles, but then he sings, and it's clear as day, and it's like, all right. Travis has a feature on it. It's not a bad feature, but it doesn't compare to Ozzy's. The song ends with a nice guitar solo. The hook on this is probably the best hook, tied with Die For Me for the best hook on the album. Overall, this is probably going to be the song that blows up the most on the charts, and I can see why. It's an amazing song with a feature from a, a brand new talent and a godfather of metal over here, Ozzy Osbourne. So, take what you want. You can hear it now first. This is the best song on the album. It's going to be the one that you hear the most on the radio going forward. So, take what you want. Love that song. Alright, moving on, we have I'm Gonna Be Me, a song that I feel like there's a lot of passion in Posty's vocals on this song, and the hook is pretty upbeat and positive, kind of different for a Posty song. I really enjoyed this song, actually. In my review for a song coming up, you're gonna go like, why did you like this positive hook? Well, it's because I think he mixes the positivity and the melancholy themes of his music really well in this song. On a song coming up, it's kind of only positive, make me want to throw up vibes, but I'm Gonna Be Me's got a good catchy hook upbeat and but it's got some melancholy really powerful vocals that sounds like he put his most effort into on this song moving on we have staring at the sun with a feature from SZA overall I was really shocked at this song because it sounds like a throwaway and this is probably Posty's biggest feature on the album SZA who's an artist that's probably one of the most poppin' artists of the last couple years and he just throws out this really generic uninspired track even like the structure of the track, where it, just, it starts off with a posty section and then it moves to a SZA section. Like no like splicing up in between, kind of like switching back and forth. Overall, I think this is a wasted opportunity of what could have been a really big single and like one of the biggest chart popping songs on this record. But at the end of the day, this is a weak track, really uninspired. I could see why some people could maybe like it if they have generic bland pop taste, but overall this was not a song for me. Oh, what is this song up ahead? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Well, I can say this about the song. I thought Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was a decent movie with some really beautiful animation. But at the same time, this song sucks. This song blows. I hate it. It's got overplayed on the radio. It wasn't good to begin with. It's too cheerful, too upbeat. Fuck this song. Bye, Sunflower. I hope I never hear you again. 
Um, moving on, we have Internet, which was actually leaked before this album, and it had a Kanye verse originally. And I believe if we had gotten that Kanye verse in the song, it could have been one of the better songs in the album. But because it was cut, this song kind of sounds more like an interlude and kind of a lazy interlude at that. It could have been a full-fledged song, but now it's at 2 minutes and 3 seconds, the shortest song on the album. Sounds kind of unfinished. Could have been a great song if we got a yay verse, but we have the internet. Probably the worst song on the album because of it. Well, Sunflower is pretty bad too. Whatever. Moving on, we have the second single for the album, Goodbyes featuring Young Thug. A great single. Probably not my favorite single because there's another song on this album that was my favorite single, but a really good single nonetheless. Young Thug drops a good verse. Young Thug's been killing it this year off the London and his album, which... Seeing the way things are going, it's probably going to make my top 10 albums of the year. So if you haven't listened to Young Thug's new album, go listen to that. Because it was pretty much solid the whole way through. Goodbyes, another great hook from Posty. Really catchy. Overall, a really good song and a good single to get people excited for this record. Which they didn't know it was coming when they released this single, but I'm sure people could have figured it out. Next up, we have another solo Posty song, Myself, which kind of leans into the weirder R&B direction that I don't think Posty should lean towards. I think he should stick more to the hip-hop, trap-inspired beats, or maybe even country-inspired beats. Because when I think of Posty, I think he's kind of like a pop, hip-hop, and flux enough a little bit of like country sprinkled on top. But this leans more towards that sappy R&B style, and I don't really enjoy it. It's not for me, and Myself ends up being one of my least favorite songs on the record, but... Alright, next up we have I Know, which I guess is another cookie cutter type of post song that everyone's heard before. But like I said before, if it's got a good hook, if he sounds passionate in his vocals, I'm going to enjoy it. And that's why I enjoy it, I know. It's got a good hook. It's got some good themes going on. Obviously themes that Posty's treaded over time and time again. But and So that's why we listen to Posty Records, to deal with our heartbreak. And I saw some dude post a comment like, My girlfriend already cheated on me to this album. And some dude replied, Well, at least you have this album to listen to because of it. And yeah, and it fits both ways. Like, it makes you want to feel love, but it also helps you deal with the hurt of love at the same time. So thanks to Posty for doing that, at least. Alright, and to finish the album off, we have Wow, which... At the end of the day, is a really bizarre choice for an outro song. Honestly, I feel like this was just tacked on because it was such a popular single. Which, at the same time, I feel like Sunflower also probably wasn't intended to be on this record. But was tacked on because it got so popular. Wow, I feel like the same way. I think it was just a Lucy decided to add because of its popularity. But, it is a good song. Do I think it ruins the flow and theme of the album a little bit? Maybe, but... I really enjoyed this song when I first heard it. I still enjoy it to this day. Probably Posty's biggest banger. Even more of a banger than Rockstar, I'd say. So, wow, it was a good song. Really enjoyed it. The remix, I don't know. Tyga's verse is kind of uninspired. Roddy Rich is alright. But, wow, to end the record, overall, I think this is a good song. And I don't really hate him for adding it to the end. Alright, so that was Hollywood's Bleeding. If I had to say my top three songs, it would probably be number one... Take What You Want, number two, Hollywood's Bleeding, and then number three, Die For Me. And then overall, if I had to give this record a grade, I think I'll go with a B. It was not as good as his previous works, but I think the highs on this record do reach his previous highs. It's just that the lows on this album do get lower than his previous lows. And overall, I think some of the songs got repetitive. But, at the same time, Posty can't make bad music, and he continues to slay in the scene. I'm sure a lot of these songs are going to be at the top of the charts. You're going to keep hearing from Posty until he, like, drinks himself to death off Bod Light. But, until that day, keep on making music, Posty, and I'll see you guys in the next album review. Peace out.